Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at a powerful mini PC that actually looks like a pretty decent deal on paper. We've got the new GMK Tech K11 and when it comes down to it, we've got 8 cores, 16 threads and this is based on Zen 4, but this will boost up to 70 watts giving us the maximum performance out of this APU. We've also got USB 4 and Oculink up front, so if you did want to connect a really fast eGPU, you definitely could, especially over that Oculink port. And I personally think that this is a pretty good looking mini PC also. Basically, same design that we've seen from GMK Tech in their later 2024 models. We've got a full metal chassis here, and up top we've got that see-through panel. It's easily removable, it's actually a twist off, but with this one they did add some RGB to make it a bit different. Actually, it's just an RGB fan up top here. And inside of the box, along with the K11 Mini PC, we're also going to get a mounting bracket and all the hardware to use that. 6 foot HDMI cable and a 120 watt power supply, which is one of the older, larger power supplies. And we've seen some companies kind of move over to the half size 120 watt bricks. When it comes to I.O., from the left to the right, we've got our Oculink port, and this is PCIe X4 4.0 to run up to 64 gigs. We've also got USB 4, it's a 40 gig port two full-size USB 3.2 ports, and a 3.5mm audio jack. Around back, two full-size USB 2.0 ports, full-size HDMI 2.1, we've also got DisplayPort 2.1, dual 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, and another USB 4 port. In total, we can do four displays out, DisplayPort, HDMI, and both of those USB 4 ports. I did want to give you a look at the internals here, and it's actually pretty easy to get in. That top does twist off, and we've got four screws, I've already removed them. We can pull this right up and obviously we've got that fan that's gonna be plugged in. But now we can access the dual M.2 slots and our RAM. This will support two 2280 drives up to four terabytes each, bringing the total up to eight terabytes of storage. And obviously we've got dual channel SODIMM RAM. It is DDR5 and goes up to 5600. Like I mentioned, they did add a little bit of RGB to this and it's basically the RGB fan. It's non-accessible and I have not found a way to disable it. I mean, obviously if you unplug the fan, the fan's not gonna work. But when it comes to the overall specs, this is utilizing the AMD Ryzen 8945HS. It's based on Zen 4. We've got eight cores, 16 threads, and it'll clock up to 5.2 gigahertz. We can do 70 watts with this and it does stay cool with the system that they've got here. This also has the Radeon 780M RDNA 3i GPU with 12 compute units, and this will clock up to 2800 MHz. You can add up to 96 GB of RAM with this, running at 5600 MHz. You can also add up to 8 terabytes of storage to this mini PC, and we've got Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5.2. The unit I have here is running Windows 11 Pro, and I've got 32 GB of RAM. Very first thing I wanted to take a look at here was the BIOS because there are a few things that I personally like to change. And the first one here is from the main section, power mode select. We've got a quiet mode with this PC, which is 35 to 40 watts. We've got a balanced mode, which takes us from 54 to 60. And performance is gonna be all out at 65 to 70 watts. So we've got that boost up to 70 watts with this and the cooling system can handle it. It actually works quite well like this. Next thing I like to do is actually up the VRAM here, moving down to GFX configuration. You can see our UMA frame buffer size, which is our dedicated VRAM for the iGPU is set to three gigs. Personally, I just like going up to eight here if I know I've got enough. And with 32 gigs, you will have more than enough. Finally, you wanna save changes and reset, then we can get right into Windows. I've been up and running for a little while now, everything installed without a hitch, I've got everything updated, and as you can see, we've got that AMD Ryzen 9 8945HS with the Radeon 780M iGPU. 32 gigs of DDR5 at 5600, and of course the 780M, and we did go into the BIOS and take this up to 8 gigs. We also swapped it from balanced mode to performance, which is obviously going to give us better performance. And just to give you an idea here, I've got CPU-Z. We'll stress this out, and from hardware info, you can see that this does boost up to 70 watts, which is pretty good here. Now, while gaming, it's around 61 to 64, not bad, and temps are actually looking good with the new cooling system they have here. When it comes to using the K11 Mini PC as an everyday desktop, this thing is going to work out great. It is really snappy. I'm connected to Wi-Fi right now, and uh, I'll just show you here. We'll head over to GMK Tech's website. Everything loads up 
super quickly. And if we check out their mini PCs, we'll go to the K11. Very image heavy. And you can see just down the list, everything's already ready to go. And again, we've got that 35 watt, 54, 65, and 70 watt. This is set to performance mode. And yeah, we can hit 70 watts with it. Uh, 4K video playback from YouTube, not an issue for this chipset. We'll get this set up. Full screen, make sure we're at 4K, Stats for Nerds, we'll go ahead and play, and up in the top left hand corner we've got Stats for Nerds running, this is going to show us if we have any drop frames, and sometimes when you hit play it does drop a few, but as you can see we're actually at zero there, and throughout 4K 60 HDR, the 8945HS just trucks right along, and by the way, with 4K video playback, we're only pulling around 13 watts from the wall right now in performance mode. So out of the box, not a bad little system. And if you wanted to do some video editing on this, you could get it done for sure, 1080p. You could do some 4K 30. I mean, I wouldn't rely on this as my main editing machine for 4K. For 1080 home video, this thing's got more than enough power. Uh, if you wanted to install Photoshop, it's gonna handle it just fine. But personally, I would use GIMP. Basically, free Photoshop, and the 8945HS has more than enough power for tasks like that. And to give you an idea of the performance this thing's putting out, I did run some benchmarks, and then I want to jump into some gaming with this thing, because I do think it does a really good job for what we've got here. Here's Geekbench 6, single core, 2,616, multi, 13,114, and of course, the newer Zen 5 CPUs, or the newer Zen 5 mini PCs, will score a bit higher than this, but the price on those is sometimes more than double, so this is not looking bad at all for a Zen 4 chip. Checking out some GPU performance with 3D Mark, Night Raid coming in with 28,972, and the last one I ran here was Time Spy. We're getting a really respectable 3,370, especially given the fact that we're using 5,600 megahertz RAM here. Again, with those newer Zen 5 mini PCs that cost a grip, they are using LP ddr 5 x which does run it up to around 8,000 megahertz. So seeing this 780M score so high with the slower RAM is pretty impressive, but we are running this up to 70 watts. Now it's time to get into some gaming, and the first one we have here is Spider-Man 2. We're at 1080 medium with FSR frame gen on. And I do get the question a lot, you know, why do I run games with frame gen or even FSR? That's because if I showed this off running at 1080p maxed out settings, it's not going to get good performance and nobody's going to play it like that. If you end up buying a mini PC like this, you're going to be playing with these kind of settings. That's just how it is. I mean, we don't have a high-end dedicated GPU here. But with these settings, this game is very playable and it actually looks great like this. I'm seeing an average of around 72 FPS. Next up, Doom Eternal 1080p, medium settings, and I'm seeing an average of over 90 FPS. This is holding its own and if you take a look at Afterburner, you can see that we're up there around 64 to 65 watts. That 70 watt is kind of a boost. On average, I mean across the board, we've got a sustained 65 watt TDP. Here's Shadow of the Tomb Raider, just using the built-in benchmark, and it's actually been a while since I've tested this on the 780M. We're at 1080p low settings, and we can finally get over 60 FPS, but we're right there at 62 on average, and it really comes down to the newer AMD drivers and optimizations. Here's Marvel Rivals, and I did have to drop this down to 900p low settings at 1080 low with no FSR. I mean, it kind of fell on its face. It's an early access game, and to tell you the truth, you know, at these lower resolutions, I've had pretty good luck on iGPUs, but obviously taking that resolution up on integrated graphics isn't going to work out that well. And the final game we have here is Cyberpunk 2077 1080 low FSR set to balanced. We're right there on the edge. I do get some dips under 60, so your best bet here would be either take it down to 900p or add a little bit of frame gen. We saw an average of 61 FPS, but you can see that in some situations it dips under that 60 mark. Not too bad for RDNA 3 integrated graphics with slower RAM, but it would be nice to be up over this, especially at those low settings.
The final thing I wanted to talk about here were CPU temps and total system power consumption. Remember, we're in performance mode for all of these tests. When it comes to CPU temps, average 1080p gaming, we were at around 66 degrees Celsius. Maximum temperature this hit while running benchmarks was only 74. So we're well under thermal throttle here, and there is fan adjustment from the BIOS, so if you wanted to up that, you definitely could. And as for total system power consumption, this is from the wall using a kilowatt meter. And again, it's important to note that this is in performance mode. At idle, we're pulling 11 watts. 1080p gaming, this does jump up to 78 watts, and the maximum I could get this to pull while maxing out the CPU and GPU was 96 watts. We've got that 120 watt power supply, so we're under that. And overall, I do think that this is a really great performing mini PC. I personally think that having SteamOS on something like this would make a great little 1080p living room gaming mini PC. If you're interested in seeing an operating system like Bazite, very similar to SteamOS running on this, let me know in the comments below and I can do a video in the next few days. I do think we'll see some pretty decent performance here. But overall, not a bad little setup for what we've got here. And they do offer this as a bare bones setup, so you can add your own RAM and storage for much cheaper. If you're interested in learning a little more, I will leave links to their official website and Amazon. And again, if you'd like to see Bazite running on this, just let me know down below. But that's it for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.